Hey y'all, welcome back to Harmon Homestead. I'm inside today and I want to address a question that I get asked pretty frequently here on our YouTube channel. Y'all know we homestead, we grow most of what we eat. We live in rural Alabama and we raise chickens, ducks, and all sorts of stuff. People ask us questions and the main question I get asked is, why are my plants dying? Ooh, a terrible thought. So let me show you this house plant here. I'm just using a house plant because we have no vegetables growing right now, even though we are getting very close to planting cabbages, broccoli, kale, and English peas here in central Alabama. So this plant here I got in October. It's for my grandmother, and I want you to see here. There's yellowing leaves. That doesn't look too good. Some of this is expected. The plant has grown since I've got it, but there's a few reasons why it's wanting to droop, wilt, and die in some cases. So there's a million reasons, guys, and I'm not going to go over every one, but you, your um, container can be outgrown. You can be root bound. It may need more space. That's what's happening here. Could be the soil temp. Could be disease. Could be watering issue. If it's none of that, if you have the perfect setup, perfect room, perfect temps, everything else, if you have yellowing leaves, and it looks like your plants are starting to die and they do die, probably one of the things that you may encounter is a nutrient deficiency. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today. I got my little whiteboard here. I'm gonna talk about nitrogen, phosphorus, and magnesium, those three. They're very, very, very important. So what is nitrogen? You hear so many gardeners talk about nitrogen. If you haven't, you need to learn. That's why we're doing these videos in our off time. That way you can learn before you plant the spring because we are going to have the best garden, all of us, that we have ever had this year, okay? We're gonna do it right. Years ago, I planted seeds and did not fertilize. If you've followed me, you know I've said that. I said I was too cheap to even buy a sack of fertilizer. I just thought I would plant the seed and it would grow. It was horrific. I had corn that was three feet tall, no ears. Um, terrible, terrible, terrible. I didn't fertilize. I had very poor soil. I had no amendment whatsoever. So my plants didn't do well. They had a nitrogen deficiency. What is nitrogen? It makes up chlorophyll in the plant. Chlorophyll, y'all remember this from biology. You remember it from middle school, high school, college. Guys, chlorophyll allows the plant to pull in that sun, pull in the light and make energy for the plant to grow. Photosynthesis, okay? Without nitrogen, you can't have much chlorophyll doing its thing, okay? Also, nitrogen is the, it's the building block of the plant. It forms amino acids. So amino acids, protein, plant structure. If you think of a human that does not have electrolytes, they don't do well, okay? You've got to have it to survive. Your plants are the same way, and nitrogen is a key component for plant health. It's so important. How do you get nitrogen? Nitrogen occurs naturally in the soil. You can even get nitrogen in the soil from lightning. Everything I'm referencing, guys, comes from my organic plant protection book. I'll put the ISBN below. I can't find a link for it and other articles that I'm referencing lightning during a thunderstorm. We don't like lightning. We we sure don't. I mean, we, we don't like it, but it is beneficial. The good Lord set it up to where everything works in, in a cohesive environment. Everything has a purpose, and that's one of the reasons. Think of all the electrons and the energy with lightning in the ground. Think of that and think of nitrogen, the soil reactions. You can get it that way. You can get it from fertilizer. You can get it from manure. The fertilizer that we use, we use triple 13 fertilizer, 13-13-13. I put it in my soil before I plant, and then I will go back again, in some cases, and side dress with it. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I use miracle Grow. I may use whatever I can find. I may use my own homemade amendments, compost. I've got active compost. I've got all sorts of things. From what I have seen, I know people are so scared of burning up their plants, but from the videos I watch from other YouTubers that are starting out, they're more worried about burning up their plants than they are putting the nitrogen on. Load it up, okay? When you see me pour nitrogen in a, in a hole that I'm just gonna plant a tomato or pepper in, all that triple 13 fertilizer, I'm using probably 
a quarter to half of a cup, but it's deep. I always put soil on top of it. Then I put my established transplant down over it in a huge raised bed. It's got room to spread, got room to grow. Water it in afterwards or either the rain will come down. That's key, okay? If you've got plenty of area and you've got water coming in, it'll be okay. And your, your transplant is established. You can't just put one little half hardened weakling out there and expect it to do well. You have to have an established transplant that's hardened off. I would, I, from what I'm seeing y'all do, I would rather you go more so on the side of fertilizer than less, just from what I'm seeing your plants do, because it looks like there's a lot of weak plants that look like my first year that I documented all this where I didn't use fertilizer. Try it and see, just go a little bit more, okay? Don't go overboard, a little bit more, it's okay. It'll do okay, as long as you're getting water to it. Also, manure. We have chickens, so that's our manure of choice. Um, now, growing up, my parents would go get cow manure. We always talked about that. Um, that's good, that's great, but if you need high nitrogen chicken manure, that will burn up your plants. Um, that's a rule of thumb, that's what we've been taught. I would not go put any fresh manure straight on my plants. However, this past fall, I put a load of chicken manure from my chicken coops into my potting, uh, non-potting mixed bed, where it's an active compost bed. I had turnip green seeds everywhere. They germinated in the raw manure. So test some of this you've been told, okay? Test it. I've always been told don't put straight chicken manure on your plants. A for disease, possibly B because it will burn your plants up. Just sometimes check it and see because I was very surprised about that. Now we didn't eat the turnip greens. I just let them go. The chickens ended up eating them. They scratched through it, but it was very interesting to see that because I thought, well, surely they won't germinate now because that manure is on it. Oh, yes, they did, and they did just fine until the chickens ate them up. So, lightning, manure, and fertilizers, three ways you can get it. You need to start out with it. How do you know if you have a nitrogen deficiency? The number one thing, guys, this right here, yellowing leaves. If we've eliminated disease, if we've eliminated temps, if we've eliminated they're not root-bound, this is, if we've not, if we've eliminated all these things, if your plant is yellowing and dropping leaves and dying, it is going to be a nitrogen deficiency a lot of the times. If, especially if you've not used fertilizer. Also, also, you can get nitrogen through compost. Um, you can, usually everything's kind of broken down. It's just an all around good thing. It's not a hit of nitrogen. The fertilizer and manure are more of hits of nitrogen, okay? If you don't want to use fertilizer, do compost. You do you do your thing. We do it all, okay? Also, plants will be stunted. They'll be short. I can attest to this. Like I said, my first year gardening, it was terrible. It was terrible. Very short, very stunted, very low produce yields. Didn't get anything, okay? Blooms would bloom. They'd fall off. Uh, nothing got pollinated everything just it just couldn't withstand okay i'll tell you something else that i've learned if you don't see a lot of um bees buzzing around your plants when they're blooming and they're poorly looking and they're short and they're small and they're yellow and you don't see a lot of pollinators they're not going to go to the place where they can't get a lot of of that that good nectar and stuff out of those blooms they're not going to go to a poor plant if they've got a great plant right down the road does that make sense they're going to pollinate but if you don't notice a lot of pollinators, a lot of things thriving around your plant and its own little ecosystem in your garden, then there, there's a deficiency. There's something wrong with your garden if everything is that stunted. That's just from what I've witnessed. The, the better that my plants do, the more vigorous they grow, the more bees come in, the more blooms I've got, the more everything is swarming and buzzing and thriving and doing well, okay, and growing. So they're attracted to it. They wanna go where it's good, not where it's bad. All right, so what causes naturally no nitrogen? What's some of the problems that we face? If you have clay soil, if you live in the south and you're not near the beach, you probably do, okay? We live in the south, again, central Alabama, everything is clay, clay, clay. We've got shell in it, that's what we call it. Some people may call it fool's gold. Um, that's all in our soil naturally. It's rock, it's shell, it's fool's gold, it's clay, it's hard, it's compact. If your soil is compact like this, those plants roots cannot go down and pull up those nutrients because everything is stuck right here. They can't get it as well. 
if compared to if it was loose and open and everything was thriving and moving, those roots could go down and reach into it and pull up those nutrients. Everything is better if it's looser, okay? However, another problem for low nitrogen uptake with plants, if you have sandy soil, if you do live near the beach, if you've got soil that's just like sugar, like sand, everything is running through it. It's like pouring water on Swiss cheese with holes all in it. It's just gonna fall right through. That's kind of what the nitrogen and nutrients are doing with that soil. There's a lot of runoff, everything runs down. So the roots, there's no, it's not holding everything, the soil, so the roots can't grab it up quick enough. Everything just goes right through. So the roots are trying, but everything is just constantly going away, running off. If you have sandy soil, another problem, heavy rain. Rain will cause this washes the nutrients out. It's over diluting it, okay, over time. So if you have a severe wet summer, you have flooding, this is why your plant can't catch up. Those roots, they're waterlogged themselves. They can't reach down and get nutrients because everything's running off, running down, running away. Um, especially if you live like us and you're on a hillside. We're in between mountains. I told you we're on the tip of the Appalachian Mountains. We can't, um, we have very few spots that are flat to, to farm. Um, everything is on a slant, our pasture garden's on a slant somehow where everything is, um, it's just, we're, we're on top of a hill. So it's harder that way anyways, trying to garden, much less if you have a flood, um, it will destroy a garden. On the flip side, if you have drought, if you have soil sitting here, perfect soil, those roots are going to try to pull those nutrients. Okay. But if there's no water, everything's dry. It's just, there, it's just sitting here. It can't pull down and get everything up because everything's dry, not activated. You've got to have water for plants to grow. Everything has got to have water. So just as bad as heavy rain is over diluting the nutrients and washing everything out, no rain is just as bad because it's not making the nutrients available to the plant's roots to pull, those, pull that up. Once the plant gets the nutrients, the plant will grow up top. You visibly see it on crops that are not root crops. But you've got to think about your soil. Your soil is so important. Last but not least, if your soil sitting here, like this morning we had a hard frost, it's frozen. It's just like, if you've got a hard frost outside, it's no different than if you've got clay soil. Everything's just sitting here like a block. The, the plant can't reach down and get that. And also the plant's not wanting to because the plant's not thriving in those temps usually. A tomato plant won't do good in a frost. It kills it. It can't. The soil's hard. The plant can't take the temps. It can't get nutrients. But if you're if it's not a frost and it's just cooler soil temps, everything's not activated. You've got to understand when you pick up a handful of soil, there are millions of little organisms in there that are moving. They don't do too well in the cool a lot of times. They want it hot and warm and that way they can be wiggling around. They're not activated as much if it's cool. So that's five reasons why you may have a natural nitrogen deficiency. Guys, probably everybody watching me has probably got reason to have one. It's just the, it's just the way it is. If you're not facing heavy rain, you're facing drought. We're in an El Nino right now. It's going to be a tough year. We've got to get prepared. So what do you do? Either use compost, if you prefer, fertilizer, again, triple 13, manure, that's natural fertilizer, and natural weather events like lightning can all help. You can't go depend on lightning. Don't try to drum it up with a lightning rod, but that's just some, a cool way to tell you how nitrogen is available. Also, what are huge nitrogen loving plants? Guys, there's nothing that I've seen that you can't pour nitrogen to and it not do better. Some plants like it better than others. They say don't put it to certain things. The number one thing is a home gardener you need for nitrogen. Guys, this right here, corn. I've got two of my dent corns here, Indian corn and earth tone dent corn that I've got from MI Gardener. We're gonna try to cross pollinate this this year and get some beautiful corn, okay? Corn has to have nitrogen. Their triple 13 doesn't cut it, okay? It does not cut it with this stuff. This stuff is like, a vacuum cleaner. It sucks it up out of the soil. It's never enough, hardly, okay? It's just not enough. Anywhere you plant this, you've got to have an amendment. So, what you can do for heavy nitrogen feeders, guys, pumpkins are pretty heavy. 
there's a lot of heavy feeders, but corn for a home grower is gonna be your top thing that needs nitrogen. What can you do? When you plant your corn, do triple 13. Again, put it down. I've done video on video on all of this planting stuff, guys. Go back and watch them while it's off season. Row you out, hoe you out a row, put down triple 13, cover it up with your hoe, just a little bit. Throw your seed down, cover it up, mound it up with your feet, hill it up. That's how you plant it. Have the fertilizer, dirt, seed, dirt. When it rains, everything gets activated. You never want your seed or your plant roots sitting directly on the fertilizer. It can burn it up that way. So cover it up with a little dirt, it'll be okay. Corn has to have an extra boost of nitrogen. So what we do is we side dress it with ammonium nitrate when it's about a foot tall. Um, usually V6 stage, that's how many leaves are on the plant. It has to be on up a little bit, but you wanna catch it young. It will jump within it, two feet within two weeks. I promise you guys, we've done videos and time lapses on this. Corn jumps, it has to have it. Sometimes I will side dress mine twice, okay? It's such a heavy feeder. If you want 13 foot corn, you're gonna have to do something like that. Get weeds out. Weeds will feed on nitrogen with any of your plants. They're taking in those good nutrients too. So if you want the most available to your plants, get those weeds out of there, okay? You can also plant things that produce nitrogen. These would be plants that don't like a lot of nitrogen. That would be beans and peas. That's two examples. They produce their own, okay? It does a process in the soil where it doesn't like a lot of nitrogen, it throws it off instead. Beans love corn. Beans will put off the nitrogen for the corn. The corn loves it. Beans can run up the corn. They're a match made in heaven, okay? Cow peas, English peas, things like that. Anything like that puts off nitrogen naturally into the soil. So, that's nitrogen. Let's talk about phosphorus. So, phosphorus, the same causes with the soil, all of this is nitrogen. Cool temps, compact soil, loose soil, heavy rain, no rain, okay? All of that. How do you know if you've got a phosphorus deficiency? Decreased yields, but the difference is with phosphorus, you're gonna have a different color. You're going to have a purplish red. It looks like it's, it's like Valentine's Day. Everything is a deep tone, like fall colors on your plant's leaves. If you notice that, and I thought this kind of had it, but it, it really don't. That is a phosphorus deficiency. How do you fix that? It's triple 13 fertilizer. Any good all-purpose fertilizer will work, okay? It will work for this. Usually in my garden, I've never seen anything like that. You're going to see a nitrogen deficiency. Also with nitrogen and phosphorus, what can you do to amend it? Something else, blood meal, bone meal. You see that at the store, those are very good in these kind of nutrients. If you want to go the organic route, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. That's just some things that have this stuff. So phosphorus has purplish red leaves. What about magnesium? Magnesium, you will have a yellow bronze, kind of like this right here, okay? It will be a bronzy color on top of yellow. It'll look brown. That can be a magnesium deficiency. You see that right there, that deepest leaf. It looks rough, rough, and sudden death with your plants. Now, what is a cause of a magnesium deficiency? Well, too much potassium fertilizer. If you've got too much potassium, it's not gonna uptake magnesium. So be careful again with the fertilizer, but what can you do to combat that? Epsom salt, putting that around your plants. A lot of people swear by that with their tomatoes. I don't, mine have done fine but Epsom salt has magnesium. It's magnesium salts. That will help with a magnesium deficiency. Um, be very careful putting that into your soil, but I think, I think it's good. I've just never had the need to use it, but that will help. A lot of people say it increases the yield of their tomatoes or improves the taste. So either way, if you think you've got a magnesium deficiency, whether your soil is poor, like we talked about the five reasons, or if you think that you've got too much potassium on your plants, Boom, there you go. Um, what can be some causes of too much potassium, too much fertilizer, too much compost? Uh, potash. If you're going and putting wood ashes on your garden, I do. You could have too much potassium. 
If you've got a huge raised bed, you really don't have to worry about this stuff, guys. It's the soil is very forgiving. And the reason being with raised bed gardening that it is so forgiving, your raised bed is built on top of the soil. So no matter what, at the end of the day, your plants can dig down and those roots will still pull nutrients from the soil below your raised bed that you've amended. All you're doing is getting it, giving it like a perfect growing medium, but that soil, that dirt, that piece of your yard up under the raised bed is still helping the raised bed. Raised beds are just better if you don't want to till in the soil, you want less weeds, you don't want as much grass. That's why we started with raised beds. Raised beds are a wonderful thing. You can control it. And again, if you have poor soil like we do, shell rock, clay, sand, loam, you can change it, okay? But still, that soil's there up under it to help it. It will never go just completely barren because they'll always be able to feed from the natural pre-existing ecosystem up under it. So don't get too wound up on it. The main thing I want you to think about is nitrogen. Nitrogen, nitrogen. Like I said, guys, I see a lot of videos. They look like my first ones where everything was poor and stunted. Go back and look at this year about my garden tour. Go look at my video, Faith, Purpose, Knowledge, where I was standing there at my garden. It was a jungle. I've never grown vegetables like that. What did I do different this year? Compost. I hit everything with fertilizer. At least once a week, I was fertilizing my plants. They were ridiculous. Tomato plants 10 feet tall. I've never seen anything like it. Um, we grew tomato plants on cattle panels. They were, I mean, branched over each side of the cattle panel trying to hit the ground on the other side. I've never grown plants like that. I had to put forth work every day in that garden. It was almost too vigorous, but I was able to can, again, over a thousand jars of food in a 20 by 30 and a 20 by 10 bed, plus my, um, pasture garden with corn. So guys, you can grow a lot of food in a raised bed. Don't be deceived. Okay. So that's one reason your plants may be dying. We may talk about compact soil. We, who knows next? I just want to do like a little class while that's on my mind. We got a lot coming out this week. Stay with us. We'll see you guys next time on Harmon Homestead.